A growing number of Chinese people now feel that it is getting harder to get cash out of their banks. This 80-year-old woman is being carried to the bank by her family because banks require that money transfers must be done in person. She's carried to the bank to transfer money, okay? She's carried to the bank to transfer money. The Chinese possess the spirit of not fearing hardship and enduring it. But the current situation is breaking their bottom line. That is, their money in the bank is gone, and it's not a small amount. Since mid to late April 2022, there have been reports of customers not being able to withdraw their money from a number of village banks in Hunan and Anhui province. Since April 18th, six village banks in these two provinces have been closing their online banking services on the grounds of a system upgrade. Online and mobile banking services have been suspended. As a result, many online customers are unable to withdraw cash, leading to bank runs. This incident involves more than 40 billion renminbi, or about 6 billion US dollars. Until now, the online businesses of these banks hasn't been restored and the customers' deposits seem to have vanished into thin air. Most of the affected customers are from outside the provinces, mainly from the more economically developed regions. Many of them bought financial products from those village banks a couple of years ago through online financial platforms such as the Chinese e-commerce giant, Jingdong Finance, with annual interest rates ranging from 4.1% to 4.9%. Without online access, not only are out-of-town customers unable to do banking, but their account balances have been reset to zero. Their hard-earned money has vanished. The incident continues to attract public attention. The most alarming part for the Chinese is that landmines like this may not only be buried in these two provinces. The village-level banks involved in this incident have a majority shareholder, Xichang Agricultural and Commercial Bank. The bank's actual controller is Xichang Investment Group and it's directly managed by Xichang Municipal Finance Bureau. Simply put, the actual custodian of these village banks is the Xichang Municipal Finance Bureau. It was clearly stated in the 2021 appraisal report of Xichang Investment Group that the company was a state-owned enterprise directly under the Xichang Municipal Government and the sole shareholder and effective controller was the Xichang Municipal Finance Bureau. However, the Xichang Municipal Finance Bureau is trying to sever its connection in this matter to avoid responsibilities. On May 25th, Xichang Agricultural and Commercial Bank released a statement saying that it was only the majority shareholder of these village banks and some other individual village banks and didn't actually control the operation of these banks. Yet previously, Chinese media have reported that a seemingly private company, Xinzai Fu Group, was involved in Xichang Agricultural and Commercial Bank as a hidden shareholder although the bank declared that it had nothing to do with the Xinzai Fu Group, be its equity investment, capital, or business. But on May 18th, a week before the bank made its statement, CBRC, China Banking Regulatory Commission, said that Xinzai Fu Group was one of the shareholders of four village banks in Hunan. Xinzai Fu Group was suspected of having committed illegal crimes by colluding internally and externally, using third-party platforms and fund brokers to absorb public funds, and it was under investigation. For the average customer, virtually no one has any idea who Xinzai Fu Group is. According to China's banking policy, a village bank must have the participation of a proper Chinese financial institution, in this case, Xichang Agricultural and Commercial Bank, which is recognized by the public as having government background. Now the Xichang municipal government is trying to avoid responsibility and the CBRC's announcement seems to try to put all the blame on the private company Xinzai Fu Group and the fleeing chairman of the board. According to Chinese media, iPhone.com, in February 2022, a vice president of the CBRC was arrested for accepting bribes, and the chairman of the board of directors of Xinzai Fu Group was approached by investigators. Later, this chairman went to the U.S. The public speculated that the chairman had deregistered the company at that time and fled with the money, which eventually led to the blow-up of these village banks involving 40 billion renminbi. Will customers be able to recover their deposits? The China Banking Regulatory Commission didn't clearly say. It made a vague statement saying that all businesses conducted in accordance with the law and regulations are protected by national laws, and it reminded financial consumers to choose proper channels for financial services not to be misled by false advertisements such as high interest rate and high yield, and not to easily entrust their funds to third parties to prevent being cheated. By the sound of it, it tries to say that the money has been stolen and there is nothing the government or the bank can do, so consider it bad luck. The official statement naturally made the affected customers more anxious. Bank deposits differ from wealth management products. Their interest rates are only a tad higher than the base rate. It will be more appropriate to say that the Chinese officials are trying to pass the buck again, accusing the customers of being greedy.
At present, banking victims risk being pepper sprayed if they demand their money back. More often than not, they get down on their knees and plead to the vehicles that the officials are riding in. According to China's Deposit Insurance Ordinance, commercial banks are required to take out deposit insurance and the maximum amount depositors can be reimbursed by the insurance fund is 500,000 renminbi or 75,000 US dollars. But the official bank involved, the Xuchang Agricultural and Commercial Bank, has claimed that the deposits were never transferred to its account. Instead, it was sent to an account controlled by the bank's shareholder, the Xinzai Fu Group, which was dissolved on February 10, 2022. Does this mean that this official bank isn't responsible for the missing funds because it hasn't received them? let alone expect it to offer deposit insurance to cover the vanished funds. One victim said in a telephone interview with overseas Chinese media that she started to deposit her money in the bank in 2020. The interest rate for a five-year term was 4.5% at the time. Since it was a bank deposit, not a financial product, she had never thought that the bank could have no credibility. She said, I have been frugal saving money by skipping hospital visits despite being sick. I don't even dare to buy a piece of expensive clothing. Work is hardly available under the epidemic, and I wanted to earn money for a down payment on a home. But now everything has gone down the drain. I don't sleep well every day. I would thank God if I could get my principal back. On the Chinese internet, there is a saying, a piece of dust of the times, when falling on an individual is just like a big mountain. The story of the 400,000 victims losing their bank savings is an illustration of the trail left by the dust of the times. The Xi Jinping government has recognized the financial crisis in China. Since 2021, the China Securities Regulatory Commission, or CSRC, and the Ministry of Public Security have been working together to rectify the financial market, especially the banks from big to small. At present, many individuals have been arrested in various local banks. As of June 6, 2022, 56 senior officials in China's banking system have been investigated and 37 of them have been charged. In particular, small and medium-sized banks have been where most of the local financial corruption occurs. In a northeastern province, for example, 63 heads of small and medium-sized banks have been detained and subjected to criminal prosecution between 2021 and May 2022. The tightening of regulation and supervision of banks and financing platforms, along with the tightening of policies in the real estate industry, have caused many local banks to pop in recent years and drive other financial chaos. What happened in the two provinces mentioned at the beginning should be the most prominent and severe ones as they could no longer cover up and have popped as a result. In reality, there are far more cases than these. It looks like the local government isn't going to take the responsibility, and neither is the central bank and insurance commission. This is a disaster for average customers who have followed the legal procedures and worked with the banks that have proper licenses. Currently, the official statement of the CCP seems to suggest that the general public needs to take over the work of the regulator when opening a bank account. Average customers need to investigate the shareholder structure of the bank and the internal flow of funds before deciding whether they should open an account. The risk of money being defrauded must all be borne by customers. Some netizens say that they blame themselves for being greedy when their P2P investments pop. They blame themselves for being stupid when their stocks fail. And when their mutual funds dip, they blame themselves for not being discerning. But how come the safest bank deposits have become so unreliable? In fact, money in China's banks is becoming increasingly risky it's easy to open an account and put money in. But once it's in, it's getting harder and harder to get it out. It's over, it's over. We can't get the money out in a short time. People from two districts are lining up here. The front line is for the ATM machines. The back line is for the counters. I have filmed the lines to the end. It will take at least one hour. There are only two banks open in the entire Chongwen district. All banks in Haidian district and Chaoyang district are closed. This is the Industrial and Commercial Bank. On January 26, 2022, China's Central Bank said it would implement a new policy on March 1st that requires individuals to register the source or use of funds when accessing 50,000 renminbi or more than 7,500 US dollars in cash. When this policy came out, Chinese netizens were outraged and thought it was an infringement of depositors' privacy. Perhaps the opposition was too great because the central bank announced on February 21st that the new policy would be temporarily suspended. If one is sensitive, one can read between the lines of this new policy. On the one hand, the CCP wants to know how many assets the Chinese people have in preparation to force people to give up their renminbi paper money and move to digital currency in a full-scale manner. On the other hand, the current Chinese government is really running out of money 
so it is trying every possible way to make people keep their money in the bank and not draw it out. Here's a lady who was given a hard time by the bank and can't get any money out with either her new or old ID card. Why don't you go to the Public Security Bureau to solve it? Why do I need to go to the Public Security Bureau? How come we need the Public Security Bureau to solve the problem? In some banks, people want to check their bank balances. Surprisingly, they are rejected. We want to check the balance in our account to see if our money is still there. Are you going to do that for us? Are you going to check it for us? We're just going to check if our money is still there. Don't lie to get us out. We won't get out. I want to check my own bank balance. Is there anything wrong? I've been here since 6 o'clock in the morning until now. Now I'm told that it's closed. Everyone, take a look. Such a bank. It refuses to look it up for us. Just like that. These few people in charge left. Look. Isn't this sad for ordinary people? An exiled Chinese tycoon revealed in a live stream that nearly 80% of China's domestic bank deposits, which now amount to 30 to 40 trillion US dollars, have been loaned out and loaned out repeatedly between banks. The vast majority of this loaned money has been secretly transferred abroad by the powerful and rich of the CCP and their white gloves. This claim has some credibility. For example, consider the Xiao Jinhua case that's considered the number one case by Beijing five years ago. Xiao Jianhua, the founder of Tomorrow Group, was kidnapped from Hong Kong to mainland China for investigation on January 27, 2017. He was a mega billionaire. The world's richest man in 2018, Bezos, had a net worth of 138.8 billion US dollars, which was less than one third of the assets of the Tomorrow Group. He was ranked first in China's financial circles. He holds dual citizenships from two other countries and permanent residency in Hong Kong. However, his true identity was only exposed when a domestic bank went bankrupt. On February 7, 2021, the Beijing No. 1 Intermediate Court ruled that Baoshang Bank in Inner Mongolia province had gone bankrupt. Baoshang Bank's largest shareholder, the Tomorrow Group, held close to 90% of the shares. On May 24, 2019, Baoshang Bank was taken over jointly by the People's Bank of China and the China Banking Regulatory Commission due to serious credit risks making it the first commercial bank to be taken over in China in 20 years. The results of the liquidation show that during the 15 years from 2005 to 2019, the Tomorrow Group took out credit funds in the form of 347 loans through the registration of 209 shell companies, resulting in a total of 156 billion RMB, or about 23.4 billion US dollars, all of which became non-performing loans. In other words, the Tomorrow Group siphoned out 23.4 billion US dollars from Baoshang Bank by using empty certificates. Xiao Jianhua's rise to prominence was during a period when former party leader Jiang Zemin was either directly in power or indirectly behind the scenes, that is, from 1999 to 2012. During this period, China's financial sector became a very special industry, with power intervening in all aspects of finance. How does it work? The story of Lu Nung Group is a typical example. Lu Nung Group used to be the largest state-owned enterprise in Shandong province, with assets of 11 billion US dollars. It was acquired by a private company in 2006 for as little as 560 million US dollars. It means over 10 billion US dollars of state-owned assets have been misappropriated. An investigation by the New York Times revealed that several of the companies that acquired Lu Nung Group were under Xiao Jianhua's name. Xiao is alleged to have been the frontman in the acquisition, while the actual acquirer was the son of Zheng Qinghong, a former member of the Standing Committee of the Chinese Communist Party's Politburo and Vice Chairman. Dong Qinghong is a close associate of Jiang Zemin. The various crises sown during the Jiang Zemin era began to explode during the Xi Jinping era, and it is the billions of ordinary people in China who will bear the price. The CCP is keeping an even tighter eye now on the money in the banks in order to prevent a sudden financial crisis and the coming economic recession. Recently, some local state-owned banks in China have started to check accounts with relatively frequent online transactions and impose restrictions in the name of anti-fraud, anti-money laundering, 
and maintaining the safety of customers' funds being restricted from online and cell phone transactions, many businesses can only be handled at bank counters in business branches or at teller machines with face recognition. At the same time, banks have also imposed restrictions on transfer limits. Since April 2022, many banks have issued announcements to adjust the limits for personal online banking transfers, online payment transactions, and non-counter operations for some customers, with single-day limits ranging from 10,000 RMB to only several thousand RMB. I was withdrawing money from an ATM at the Agriculture Bank of China. The card still has 10,000 RMB on it, but the staff said the money on the card could not be withdrawn. It will take a few days for the money to be credited to the card. You see, I couldn't withdraw any more money, and I was asked to go somewhere else to withdraw the money again. I came from the county to the city bank to withdraw money. Look, I'm from Yintian County, and I came here. If you have money, do not deposit it in the agricultural bank. The Chinese banks have taken these measures without informing the public in advance. Many people in China, even if they are slow to notice, are already aware that a debt crisis and a financial crisis are coming.